Hello, this is State Representative Rob Martwick, and I'm coming to you again from my office in Springfield, Illinois. So it's May 29th. We've got a few days left until the budget deadline of May 31st. So it's Monday. I hope you all had a, a, a nice Memorial Day, a solemn day of remembrance uh, for those who made the sacrifice for our country. I uh, hope you were able to relax and enjoy some time with family. We were here. It's now uh, 7.30. We just got out of session. We've been in session all day. Um, and we start up again tomorrow morning as we're working trying to get to the budget deadline. So I, I wanted to do a quick Facebook Live video, as I like to do, and talk to you a little bit about math, a little bit about budget, a little bit about taxes. And so, as I'm sure you're aware, there's been much talk about a potential tax increase. And, and there's no doubt that that is what's going to have to be done. Uh, and, and, and really, let me, let me be very unequivocally clear here. Anyone who says that we can balance a budget without a tax increase is lying to you. Okay, let me repeat that. They're lying to you. Either that or they don't know what they're talking about. We're currently spending $41 billion a year. We're taking in about $32 billion. And everyone who's honest acknowledges that there's no way to close that gap with anything less than some sort of tax increase. So what's been talked about? A lot that's been talked about was we were at 5%. That expired and went down to 3.75%, which created this big budget mess. We stacked up a backlog of bills that we're going to have to pay interest on. And, and now much talk has been talked about getting us back to that level. No one wants to actually get to five because that might look bad. So we're talking about modestly less than that, which I think is silly. But nonetheless, a 4.95% or a 4.99%. But for all intents and purposes, putting it back at 5%. So the question that you have to ask yourself is, what does that cost? And I think that's a very important question. We need to know this. So today in committee, when we were talking about this, one of my colleagues on the Republican side brought up the fact that this is going to cost the median family in Illinois. The median family, which is an income of about $58,000 a year, a very middle class, working class family, it's going to cost them $600 a year. $600. Let me write that down there. Median family. Six hundred dollars per year. And that's no joke. That's a lot of money. I mean, I, I don't think anyone should be to take that lightly, right? No one wants to pay six hundred dollars more in taxes. Um, certainly not a family of four that's only making fifty-eight thousand. Just out of curiosity, Governor Rauner filed $188 million of income last year, just for the sake of argument. It, it's going to cost him $2.4 million more in taxes. It's a lot more than $600, but just so you know, it's going to cost him two point four million. Median family, $58,600 a year. So the, the question is, is how do you justify asking them to pay $600 a year more? Well, one of the things I always like to say is, well, fiscal responsibility says if we don't do that and we keep stacking up debts, we're going to have to raise it even more than $600 to pay off those debts in the future. So... Just like your credit cards, the sooner you start paying them off, the better. And this is the situation we're left with after years of fiscal irresponsibility. But there's another point to it, and that's program cuts. And I've just taken three here, right? So everyone knows that over the course of the last three years, Governor Rauner has proposed massive cuts to programs in an attempt to make spending cuts to balance the budget. Now here's the thing, even with all the spending cuts he's proposed, every budget he's been proposing has been billions of dollars out of balance, showing that even when he makes massive spending cuts to important programs that help the middle class, working class, and the poor, he still can't balance the budget without a tax increase. Okay, His last budget literally had a line item, $4.5 billion attributable to working together. Can you imagine that? He actually could put a dollar value saying that we're going to save $4.5 billion by working together. That's silly, and it's not the way we should run our government, not that sort of silly stuff. But let's talk about the program cuts he did propose, okay? So let's say the median family, $58,000 a year, has two kids, and those two kids are good students and they want to go to college, right? Every middle-class person's dream is to send their kids to college so they can have a better life. It's certainly mine. I imagine it's yours. So what did the governor propose in cuts? AP classes, right? 
So your kid wants to go to college, you're making $58,000 a year, two kids, you know that's going to be very expensive, but hey, there's good news for you. There's opportunities in the state of Illinois. AP education, well, if you take AP classes and your kids test well in the AP exam, they get credits for college, meaning less classes you have to take in college. And at our state university rate, right, University of Illinois, Northern, Southern, Eastern, Western, ISU, each credit that you get for an AP class that you don't have to take a college class for, every credit that you satisfy is worth about $1,500. So if you have a child who takes three PA, AP education classes, and that's two kids, that's six college classes satisfied at $1,500 per class, well, that's, by my math, that is $9,000 that you saved in paying for your kid's college education. A family of $58,000 a year saved $9,000 thanks to AP education. What did Governor Honor propose? He proposed to eliminate funding. So without the tax increase, in order to make the budget balance, we have to get rid of those $9,000 savings. It just costs you $9,000 a year more to send your kids to college. But you saved $600 a year. So let's talk about the next thing. See, state universities, right? I mean, Governor Rauner, I believe, sent his kids to Ivy League educations, which cost $65,000 a year or so. But good news, we have state universities. University of Illinois, tuition, there are other costs associated. Tuition is about $12,000 a year. $12,000 a year, except, see, here's the thing. At, the governor proposed a 31% cut in funding to higher education. Many of the universities told us that that could mean as much as a 20% increase in tuition. So let's do the math again. You've got two kids that go to the State University of Illinois, a 20% tuition increase at $12,000 a year. Well, that's $2,400 a year times four, that's $9,600 with $10,000, let's say $10,000, times two kids, well, that's going to cost you $20,000 more to send your kids to college, plus the $9,000 that you no longer receive in AP credits because we eliminated the program. Now you're paying $29,000 a year, or not $29,000 total over four years, to send two kids to college. But hey, you save $600 because we didn't raise the taxes. Finally, let's talk about the last one, MAP grants, Monetary Assistance Program. This is needs-based, right? So it's not available to the wealthy. Um, it's available to poor, middle class. Many, many students in my district take advantage of this. I believe there are 1,200 students in my district utilizing MAP grants to help them pay for college. It's grants to make college more affordable for families that really can't afford college. Well, what's a MAP grant worth? Well, it's worth about $4,200 per year in tuition assistance for a median family making $58,000 a year. $4,200 per year. Two kids, four years. $38,000 plus $20,000 plus $9,000 more that it's going to cost you to send your two kids to college so that you can save $600 a year. Now, this is just one example. There are many other examples. But just for college tuition for a middle-class family with two children who want to go to college, we are looking at $67,000 more so that you can save $600 a year. This is the trade-off in balancing a budget. If you don't raise the taxes $600 a year, you have to pay for the programs. And I know what you're saying, but how can $600 a year more get me this much in benefits? Because the governor's got to pay $2.4 million 
and most of the people that supported him have to pay two point four million. Like Ken Griffin was going to have to pay a lot more than two point four million, which is why they would rather maybe get rid of these programs and not pay that additional tax. So, the real cost of a tax increase is that there are people that benefit tremendously, and then there are people that suffer dramatically. And it's the middle class, the working class, and the poor. That's what's going on here. So people write to me all the time and say, don't raise my taxes. I understand why. No one wants to pay more taxes. Not the wealthiest people in our state, not the middle class people in our state, and certainly not the poorest people in our state, because who can afford more? But what you need to understand is that that simple equation shows you how a tax increase can actually be beneficial and save you money. And this is not even getting into, this is assuming you've got two great kids. What if your kids have autism or epilepsy and you need assistance for that? Those programs proposed by the governor eliminate it. God forbid one of your kids gets into trouble and has addiction problems or mental health eliminated by the governor. What if you have parents that are living at home and aged and, and you're wondering how you're going to care for them? Good news. In the state of Illinois, we have Meals on Wheels. We have in-home care for senior citizens that allows your parents to live in dignity in their own homes and not be forced into nursing homes. The governor proposed to eliminate funding for that. All to save himself some money. These are programs that affect middle class people in my neighborhood, probably in your neighborhoods, people you know, because this is the vast majority of the people in Illinois. That's why it's the median family, $58,000 a year. So, you know, it, it's never as simple as it seems. This is math, okay? People write to me and they say, don't do this, don't do that, because I've read this or I read that. You know what? I don't mind if you disagree with me, but I've shown you my math. Show me yours. This is the math of a tax increase or a tax cut if we don't do a tax increase. If we don't raise the taxes to balance our budget, we will accumulate debt and we will have wholesale eliminations of programs. And that's why everyone admits that we need a tax increase. Even the governor behind closed doors has admitted to people that we need a tax increase. But he's holding it up to get his political agenda before he agrees to do it. And that's not right. My hope is that before we leave in the next three days, we propose a balanced budget, and it has a tax increase that asks a little bit more for middle and working class families to preserve massive benefits, to allow their children to get ahead, to allow their parents to live out their senior years with respect and dignity, to make sure that the most vulnerable citizens in our society are not left off, the, 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 the lose their services, to make sure that kids that live in troubled neighborhoods have opportunities and jobs so that they're staying out of jails and prisons and going to schools and becoming productive citizens. To me, that's economic development. That's why we should do this. It's the right thing to do. If you disagree with me, of course, you're always to reach out. You're always welcome to reach out. I welcome it. I welcome the debate. I look forward to talking to you. Um, Check in the next two days. We're going to talk more about the budget. There's three days left. I'm going to do a video every day talking about the budget and what we can do. This is one thing. Next time we'll talk more about, about tax increases and, and, and fiscal responsibility and the right way to balance a budget. But check in. We're going to be doing more of this with more math. So if you don't like the math, show me your numbers. Thanks very much for watching. Talk to you tomorrow.